Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at estampabub.com. I'm coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Today I am going to be sharing a really pretty card with you using the new Apple Harvest stamp set. Oh my goodness, I am having so much fun with this. And it's part of the perfect partners promotion that's going on this month. Stampin' Up! just released this amazing set of dies to go with it. I'm going to tell you all about it in my video, show you a beautiful card using this bundle. This is all part of the One Stamp at a Time blog hop. Our design team today is going to be using a par garden party theme and also a color palette. So it's just a little bit different this month. I found the challenge to be fun. I always like challenges where you have to like think about, hmm, I'm going to use this, then I'm going to use that. How am I going to incorporate this color palette with my theme? And I thought since it's September already, it's a fantastic time to crack out those apples because it's going to be apple picking season very soon. Let's turn this camera around and get started. I am super excited to be sharing this bundle with you. So this is the Apple Harvest stamp set. It's a line art set that's perfect for water coloring or coloring in general. You get, you get eight different stamps in here with the apple images, the little flower blossom, um, kind of a, a hex kind of design. I don't know what you'd call this hash marks, maybe. And then three different sentiments that are really pretty fonts. Now, the Perfect Partners promotion is only lasting until the end of September. So that's when it ends. I should say only lasting. It ends the end of September. And we have uh, six different stamp sets that Stampin' Up! came out with bundles, or I should say with dies. So these are exclusive dies only for the month of September um, or while supplies last. Now, I'm not sure if they continue to have some left, they will continue to make them available to purchase. But we have the um, Apple Blossom dies. We also have a set of dies for the fresh cut flowers. And then the Playful Piggy set has a set of dies, super, super cute. It's got this little wagon in here. We have some um, tree trimming dies. These are really pretty. Also some dies that go with the Waterfall Canyon stamp set. And then that adorable Yeti, Yeti to party. <laughs> We have some really cute dies to go with that. So I will be sharing more of these, more projects made with these um, on my blog. I wanted to bring in the dies. Now, there are 25 different dies in this set and I have taken and stamped the images that have matching stamps. And then there are a ton other elements in this die set. We have the scalloped edge, when you die cut this, you also get this. There's this beautiful label. You get all these leaves. All of these are dies. So there's two, four, six, eight, uh, probably 10 dies. I think I dropped one of mine. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Um, but you get the center of the flowers. These are the flowers that are die cut. These are the flowers that are stamped and die cut, as well as a branch and the dies for the stamped images. So super fantastic set of dies here. I am going to be using along with the Apple Harvest dies and stamp set, the Timber 3D embossing folder. I've got Mary Merlot, Soft Succulent and Crumb Cake inks. These are part of the color palette that we were challenged to make a card with and a black stays on. I always like to use the waterproof ink when I'm doing water coloring. Then I brought in my water painters. I've got our Fluid 100 watercolor paper and some Baker's Twine. And if this, I wanna use this up, but if this isn't enough, I have another one that I need to use up. And if that's not enough, I have a full roll. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be set either way. Okay. 
my cardstock layers coming in here. And please know there's a free download for the card that I'm about to make. It is a project sheet that you can download. You can print it out. You can save it to your device, but it's going to give you all of the dimensions, all of the ingredients, colors, brief instructions, and photo of this project, as well as a link back to this video so you can have it and it's easily accessible. That is a free download that I will provide on my blog. So you'll find that right here on my blog. And at the end of the video, there's gonna be a link in the top right hand corner that is going to take you right to the blog post for this project where you can find that free download. Also, before I forget, click down here on that subscribe button. You wanna make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't wanna miss anything I have coming out. All right, we're gonna start with a crumb cake card base. This is four and a quarter by 11. I've scored it at five and a half, and I am just going to fold that and burnish that fold with my bone folder. Then I've got a piece of basic white, and this is three and seven eighths by five and a quarter. I've got a piece of Mary Merlot. This is three and three quarters by five. I've got another piece of Mary Merlot that is one and a quarter, no, I'm sorry, one and a half by four and a quarter, and a basic white that is one by four and a quarter. And then we need some scraps. So I've got, uh, let me grab, I'm gonna grab one of my, these are just some bits and pieces I have of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. I'm gonna grab a scrap of that, as well as crumb cake, soft succulent, and basic white. The first thing I wanna do is I want to take this layer of Mary Merlot and I'm going to run it through my Timber 3D embossing folder. This gives you a beautiful wood grain. And I like to put this in and line it up with the line that Stampin' Up! has given us. And that'll make sure that it's nice and straight in there. I'm gonna run this through my machine and get that embossed, hang tight. And here comes that layer, isn't that pretty? I'm gonna just set that aside. Next, we're going to take our stays on ink and I'm going to bring in my stamps. Now, I always like to mount all of my stamps when I'm working with a particular stamp set because I never know what I'm gonna be doing. So that way I have them, all my stamps are mounted and ready to go. So here comes our apple, and I really do love the detail on this apple. It's got a little bit of shading going on there. And then I'm gonna bring in this white strip. This is going to be for our sentiment. And I think I'm gonna use the Hope You're Feeling Better. I always need, um, get well cards, especially coming into now fall and winter. Always like the get well cards and that turned out really good. So I can have them on hand, they're ready to go. Okay, let me set that aside. I'm gonna keep this right here. We have a little bit of water coloring to do. Now there are several different ways you can water color, but I'm going to be using my ink pads. And these ink pads, don't press into the lids very easily. So what I like to do is grab an acrylic block and I add my ink to that. So there's my Mary Merlot. Here's my soft succulent. And then I need a little bit of crumb cake. And now I have a palette of ink. When I get done with these, I will take them and just put them under running water and all the ink will rinse right off. All right, I'm gonna grab my water painter. There are three different sizes in a pack. You have a large, a medium, and a small. I'm going to be using the small. And I also like to have a tissue handy when I'm using my water painter. I just, I've, I've always done that with the water painters. Okay, so one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and add a little bit of water. I don't want this to be real dark, so I'm kind of diluting my ink. I want it to be kind of a little bit softer color here. And I'm going to make three little spots 
on my watercolor paper. This is kind of pink, more so than Mary Merlot. And now I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm pushing it to push some water out of it because what I wanna do next is add water to my apple. So I'm going to get my brush, have a little bit um, more water in the end of it, and I'm just going to add water because watercolor paper works a lot better when it's wet. So I'm gonna come down here. Oh, you can see that it's, it's, it's um, kind of spreading out on its own. You just get a better coloring experience when you add that water first. And a lot of times I forget to do that. We're just so not used to doing that, right? But with watercolor paper, it really is the best way to use it. Just get right up to that edge there. Gosh, I just love the way this looks. Okay, now one thing when I was kind of playing around with this, trying to figure out my card that I noticed is that my red kind of bled into my leaf. So I don't want that to happen now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit this with a heat tool to dry it, or I would set it aside. So hang tight. That should be good. And I think I even might want to add some more red to it, but I'm gonna come in now, make sure my brush is clean. I'm gonna add some water to my leaf and probably my stem right away too. So now I'm gonna come in and grab that soft succulent now these are the colors that were part of the color palette that I could use on my card. And see how I'm just going down here on the veining and adding um, a stronger strength of the ink. The more water you add to your brush, the more diluted it's going to be. And if you go full strength without pushing a lot of water into your brush, it'll be darker. But that's how you can use the same color of ink and get two different colors on your leaves. I'm going to rinse this off again. And I'm going to come in and grab some of my crumb cake and I'm just going to color that stem. Now, I can see some of that green is coming down here into my red. If you have that happen, let's just go back and grab some more red. And I did want to make this a little bit darker anyways. I just pushed some more water out so it's not so dark. I did want to make this apple just a little bit darker. And we're going to take care of that little issue right there. I'm really excited about apple season. I love when all the apple recipes start showing up on our Facebook and Pinterest accounts. Oh, good goodness. My grandma, bless her heart, she's no longer with us, but she used to make the most amazing apple danish. She made her crust from scratch. Oh, it was my favorite. So it was kind of a joke when I would go to my mom's house, which was frequently, my grandma would always call because she lived in town anytime she was coming over, which was every time I was there, she would call and ask if we needed anything. And anytime I'd answer the phone, I would, she'd say, do you, do you guys need anything? Like you need milk or bread or whatever. And you need anything? And I'd say, yeah, apple Danish. And she would laugh and say, I'm not making apple Danish today. But it was kind of funny because I always asked her for that. All right, here's our apple. Now, the good news about this is that we have dyes that will cut this apple out. So I am going to look at how rich and beautiful that is. I just love it. Um, and again, I'm using Mary Merlot ink instead of like real red or any other red, because that was part of my color palette for this blog hop challenge. 
So I'm going to put that die on here. And then what I'm gonna do with these little polka dots is I'm going to take, gosh, if I can get them off the sheet. I'm gonna take these little flower centers. I've got two of the big ones and one little one, and I'm going to die cut those on these little circles that I made pink. Okay, and then I'm gonna take two of the big apple blossoms, and I'm gonna die cut those on this white scrap and one small one. So we're gonna do that. Then, <laughs> I'm going to take a bunch of these leaves. So we've got small leaves, we've got bigger leaves. There's a whole bunch of them in here so you don't have to run you know, one die through your machine five times. We can just keep going to town here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do about five leaves. I've got uh, three big ones, two little ones. I'm gonna do five leaves on the soft succulent and then on the crumb cake, I'm going to take the branch and I'm going to die cut that. Um, one more thing, we have this is our scalloped border. Now this was one and a, let's see, one and a half by four and a quarter. I'm going to take this scallop and I'm going to put it right down by the edge, okay? So it's just a little bit not going over the edge, but a little bit less than on the edge. I'm gonna die cut all of these things and I will be right back. Okay, you guys, we have all these little pieces here. Oops, where did that go? Here it is, I found it. <laughs> Don't worry. So here's our little tiny ones that we die cut out of the circles up here. And let me put these away. Here is our apple. That turned out really good. Here is our scalloped edge. And on the back of that die, let me grab it. On the back of this die, you can see that it's got this real skinny little area that cuts this tiny little thing out. So, oh my gosh, how pretty is that? We're not gonna use that for our card today, but I just wanted you to know about it. Okay, I'm gonna start putting things together here. So, hope you are feeling better. That's gonna go right on our scalloped border. Oh, look, I must have stamped this earlier. That one didn't turn out very good, did it? Okay, here it comes. And of course you can put this wherever you'd like, but I am going to put it so that I just have some of this peeking out from behind. You can see a little bit of the white there, but some of it's peeking out from behind. I am going to trim off, oops, I just made that crooked. Hang on, can't have that. That'll make me crazy. <laughs> it's the little things, right? I'm just gonna trim that off so it's not sticking out there looking goofy. Okay, here comes our white layer. We're gonna put our emboss layer on. And anytime I do embossing, I like to put my glue all the way around the edge so that my card doesn't buckle at all. Sometimes it will after you run it through an embossing folder. Sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it does. So it's just a good rule of thumb. Okay. Then we're gonna add this to the front of our card. I like that white pop that really pops with the um, Mary Merlot, the dark color. Okay, and here comes our little kind of banner on the front. This goes all the way from one edge to the other, which I thought was a really neat look. I'm gonna put that on here. And then I'm gonna add my apple. Now, I'm gonna use some dimensionals for my apple. I'm 
I like to use my take your pick tool to pop those backs off. If you have any trouble getting the backs off, try that. It works really good. Oops, I'm going to move it over just a little bit. There we go. And then I thought what I'd do with my branch, this would have been a good place to use the adhesive sheets on this piece so that it turned it into a sticker. But of course, I can never remember to do that. But it would be a really good idea. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here. And I think I'm just going to come in right here with that branch. And then we've got these pretty flowers. So let's, do I want to put those on dimensionals? Maybe I do. I think I might. Let's see if a mini dimensional will fit behind there. Hang on, where's my take your pick tool right here? Let's see if it'll fit right back there. Mm. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see that from that. Yeah, I don't like that because you can see it from the front. So instead of putting it right behind the stem, I maybe might put it right out here in a petal. That seems to work okay. So I'll put a couple of them on here. That'll be fine. See if I like that. Right out here. I think we need to put more than just that on the petals though, because those petals are kind of laying down. So you can do whatever you want on your card. I'm gonna pop mine up. Maybe I'll put three dimensionals on here. I'll get these on and I'll be right back. I pulled the backings off of these and you can see that this one I cut in half. I cut these in half just so they, they would fit. I didn't want them to be sticking out. Put your big flowers on first so then you kind of know what you need to do with the smaller one. And I think I'll just put that one hmm, just right here. That'll work. Look at that. Okay, now these little centers that we made, I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue in the middle of each flower, and then I'll set those in place with my take your pick tool. Anytime I have little elements like this, I love to use my putty end, and my take your pick tool, because then I don't have to futz around. Sometimes my fingers are just too big to do some of these things, you know what I mean? I know you do, because I know that other people struggle with this too. Phone beeping. I think it's actually my iPad and it's making me a little crazy. Oh my gosh, how pretty is that, right? Now, we've still got these leaves here too, so I'm just going to start tucking these under. And do this. You can just tuck them in any place. I'm just, I just put a little bit of glue on the end of the leaf. You don't need to get real crazy with the glue. Yeah, I'm looking forward to apple season. My dad, he was really picky about his apple pie and he said that I made the best apple pie ever. Now, I don't know if he was just saying that because, well, I'm his favorite daughter. <laughs> but he always, he would brag to people that I made the best apple pie. And so I'm looking forward to making some apple pie and some apple crisp. And then I love hot apple cider. Maybe we'll go for a little um, spooky wagon ride this fall. That would be kind of fun. Oh my gosh, you guys, isn't that just pretty? I really do love that. I think this is gorgeous. Last, I want to grab some of these iridescent rhinestones. I think these will be really pretty. Oops, let's get my hair out of there. And I'm just gonna sprinkle these around. These are gonna add just a little bit of bling to our card. You get a gazillion of them on a card, a pack, so. Maybe I'll just put, do I want to put some in the middle? Man, why not? Put the little ones in the middle of my flowers. That's kind of pretty. And I think I'll do one more right up here. What do you guys think? 
Now, I didn't really think ahead to do something for the inside. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of um, four by five and a quarter basic white. And then, let's see, I'll grab this flower. And I'm thinking maybe, I don't know if I wanna just do crumb cake flower. Make sure I don't have any other colored ink on there. I can maybe do just a couple little crumb cake flowers. I don't know. Let's see if I want to add just a little bit of pale, pale, pale. So I'm kind of really making this add a little bit of pink to the center. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that looks pretty good. Add this to the inside. I think I'm going to have a great get well card. And it's going to be ready, right? No messing around. There we go. Wow. So, perfect partners six different sets of dies. This is the apple blossom dies, 25 different dies in here. These are only available until the end of September or while supplies last. Now make sure you click right up here. That's going to take you over to my blog where you're going to find a free download for this card. And also you'll get all the details, the colors that I use, the dimensions, the whole works. There'll be a link back to this video. Make sure you also look for the blog list. There's gonna be a blog hop list where you can see everyone else has a garden party theme for the blog hop today, as well as the same color palette. All of the colors were soft succulent, crushed curry, Mary Merlot, crumb cake, and Cajun craze. So I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of fall kind of color combination cards in there. I'm sure they're gonna be beautiful. There are some very talented people in this design team. Thank you guys so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com. I would be happy to send you our current catalogs. Also, you're going to find an online ordering button on my blog where you can go right to my Stampin' Up! store and place an order. I always appreciate your orders. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.